The PS5 Pro is not the most expensive console to launch, especially when you adjust for inflation. The 3DO, for example, in the 1990s launched at $700, which in today's money would be over $1,500. I think it's $1,670 to be exact. But still, there is a magic number in gamers' minds when it comes to the cost of console gaming because we all feel that prices have gone up. Maybe we're feeling pinched or spread too thin. And gaming used to offer a release from that stress and worry. But depending on who you ask, you'll get different answers. In today's video, we're gonna take a break from the norm of covering action RPGs and Souls likes to try and put this into perspective. Because the frustration isn't about $700 being the price tag, I think it's about something much deeper that's going on behind the scenes over the last few years. The first thing I wanna point out is, is that for those of you diehards out there who love your physical media, you're about to get taxed hard. Physical games are obviously still going to exist, but from yesterday's announcements, all signs point to the all digital future because there isn't a PS5 Pro model that actually has a disk drive. You're gonna need the attachment and that's what I mean by tax because if you want a PS5 Pro, you best be ready to spend $800 with tax to do so. Now this isn't a PlayStation thing, this is an industry thing, but I do wonder if the PS6 and the next Xbox will do the same thing. In fact, I'm willing to bet money on that. So hello everyone and welcome to another Brian Talks about the state of the gaming industry. We're going to be talking about this on the podcast this Friday with Infinite Umbra as well as what will Xbox do next. When I first saw the news about the PS5 Pro price point, my first thought was I wondered how long it would be until the PS6 comes out. And since I'm very happy with my PS5 in its current state, I won't be upgrading. I told my wife, don't worry, we're not getting one before I told her the price. And her response was, just buy me a PC. The price point here, I think, is a red herring because we all know that when we adjust for inflation, the current generation of systems isn't that pricey. But because of inflation, things are changing and there's no which way about it. It sucks. I make less money because everything costs more. This has led to many frustrations around this generation of gaming too, as the PS5 and the Xbox Series X haven't really lived up to the expectations of some gamers. I think this is in contribution to various different marketing, which ultimately, as the generation has gone on, has seen more and more games shift into that 30 frames per second. This could be primarily more of an Xbox thing than anything else, but if you want that pristine experience, you're going to need to upgrade to a pro model of the PS5 or a high-end gaming PC. I think this is always going to be the case though, power versus cost. And if we take a look at Moore's second law, it states, as the cost of computer power and the consumer falls, the cost for producers to fulfill Moore's law follows an opposite trend. R&D manufacturing and test costs have increased steadily with each new generation of chips. The cost of tools, principally EUVL, used to manufacture chips doubles every four years. Rising manufacturing costs are an important consideration for sustaining Moore's law. This led to the formulation of Moore's second law, also called Rock's law, named after Arthur Rock, which is that the capital cost of semiconductor fabrication plants also increases exponentially over time. So I think that very well summarizes the feeling that I've seen gamers express this generation. That's not saying that you are upset about this generation. Personally, I'm not upset. I've gotten everything that I've wanted out of this generation and then some, because it's really at the end of the day all about the games, but I get that I'm also speaking from a position of privilege. I have a really great computer. I have an Xbox, a PlayStation. I have the devices that I want and I can play games when I want them. And not everybody has that level of flexibility. But I do think personally, the PS5 Pro is actually gonna sell pretty fine for those who want it. I don't think this is a mass market device. You can see that the PS5, you know, disk drive is actually currently outselling even Xbox's consoles. But despite that, this still also hasn't stopped the memes from flowing. We saw this trend briefly on the PS5 No yesterday, but this wouldn't also be any indication of things personally to come. 
after all, Sony has the games, and I'm betting that we're going to see Xbox games that are getting published over there. They're going to get the PS5 Pro Enhancement Sticker, which will kick off a whole new round of memes and console war shenanigans. And if you treat that as an entertainment, it can be quite funny. You got to look at it with with those glasses, otherwise the online discourse could be quite, quite depressing. But there's another problem brewing when it comes to gaming. Back to Moore's second law, the cost to get the power and the design of the system continues to go up, yet the feelings of how things have gotten better isn't really felt as much as the cost of making games has gone up 5x. And if you're not aware how most of these studios actually make their games, First and foremost, they generally don't risk their own capital, meaning they finance them, they borrow the money. When interest rates were super low, this meant that they could still earn interest off of their capital and use that interest to really cover the costs of the loans, the low interest loans. Now that the interest of the loans has gone up, the development cost and needed return on investment, ROI for those of you out there in the world, on these games has also gone up that's why you've also seen many things showcasing that the return like i didn't meet sales expectations despite selling what we would consider very well i would love to sell a million copies of my game i'm not that would be incredible but my costs and everything like that are more isolated i don't have 600 people working for me it's just me we're working on this etc anyway with this increase to game cost you need more people that you're going to sell your game to so you see that, or you have to raise the price of games, which has been floated already by Sony. We covered it originally, where they're talking about Spider-Man 3 breaking, being broken up into three parts of $50 each. So to get the full Spider-Man 3 experience, that would be 130. In fact, games aren't $70. You see so many bundles and early access. Any way that these games can just try and get a little bit more money out of you, that's been the trend for some time. The other option is you can make shorter games, which we're seeing a lot of success in that area. You think the double A market is coming in, being that they're being innovative. They're having more flexibility because they're having smaller teams. If you look at Light No Fire, that's a really good example of things to come. People are excited about it. It's also from a team that has a proven track history uh, of delivering and continuing to support their games. So it's something that I personally am really excited about. If you're excited about Light No Fire, be sure to hang out on the channel. We're gonna be covering that all the way up and beyond its release. The final option that you have, I guess, is to give up. Uh, not as a gamer, but from the whole thing. We've seen so much layoffs. We've seen so much constriction within the gaming industry. In fact, I don't think that we're actually in a collapse uh, like we've seen back in the 80s but i do think that that we're in a transitional phase a lot of moving parts are happening a lot of things are being reevaluated, and that is going to cause even more drama we haven't seen the end of it i think we're somewhere right in the middle of it and i don't think uh it's going to end at least in 2024 i think we still have to wait till we get past 2026 to really see how things are going to evolve because we know this truth to be self-evident hardcore gamers are going to want to play games but what i'm really thinking more of here is the middle the casual gamer out there that maybe likes to sit back relax from time to time and play a game here and there they don't have endless amounts of time they don't have time to wait for updates they don't have necessarily the ability to justify the cost of a 700 system so price is still going to be important for the console space and if it outpaces if it outprices this middle tier of gamer well, they are the mass market. They are who represents everything. And especially if they are ones that have kids, my kids spend more time on my consoles than I get to, for example. Uh, yeah, that's gonna have a knock-on effect of things to come because if you then have generation after generation just saying, at this price, I might as well get a PC. Well, that's gonna be a tectonic shift. And I think that's a part of the transition that we're currently in. The PS5 Pro is a real problem for gamers, regardless of how you feel or if whether you plan on getting one. It's a sign of things to come. All digital, no massive major leaps in technology. And this also might impact the PC market because not everybody wants to be a PC gamer. The ease of playing on consoles and having that closed loop experience is what keeps the middle gaming. But it's the middle that I worry about. With the PS6 and the next Xbox on the horizon, I'm wondering will gamers opt in to the PS5 Pro or are they just gonna wait for bigger, better things to come along? That's been my choice. That's what I'm going to do in this case, but I'd love to know yours and you can sound off below or you can come hang out on the podcast or you can come hang out on Discord. There's all kinds of ways that we can talk 
uh, gaming here in this modern era. Anyway, I do thank you guys so much to your, uh, for your time. I appreciate you hanging out. Generally speaking, I wrap up my videos with a message of hope. This is something where I think, especially within gaming and how hype really drives, uh, you know, the cycles of things that we're playing that can end up being this roller coaster of highs and extreme lows. And we see that happen time and time again. And it, and it's okay to be excited and you know, and it's fine if you feel depressed, like I've been there and you know, I would depression sucks. You know, anybody out there who has anxiety and depression knows exactly what I'm talking about. Those things can be overcome. And I honestly always try to encourage you and I wanna challenge you guys to also kind of find that balance, that middle ground. It's fine to have, you know, the highs, those, those are gonna come, et cetera, but always seek out joy and try to find those smooth waters so that way, when a $500 price point is dropped and you're like, well, that's way more than you're not hurt by it. It's just like, it's just like with the economy. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just not going to purchase in. I'm not going to buy into that because economics, I think, is really kind of the solution. If enough people are happy at the $700 price point, that's where the industry will go. And unfortunately, that's going to outpace several of you. The good news is that Historically, prices have come down and we have to wait. Anyway, I'm not trying to get you all depressed here. I'm trying to encourage you guys and uplift you. Uh, thank you guys uh, for hanging out with me today. Uh, I would say that if you are struggling with anxiety and depression, uh, get help, the, whether it's therapy, whether it's food, exercise. It's amazing to me how small changes and sometimes hidden changes. Like I didn't know that I was allergic to spinach. Well, when I stopped eating spinach, all of a sudden, wow, I feel a lot better. I, I love spinach, but apparently my body did not. There are little sometimes things, and sometimes you gotta, I gotta encourage you to be curious and be the inner scientist and hunt down and try different things. In fact, that's usually where I would start. Clean your room, make your bed, brush your teeth, take a shower. Those are some really simple steps that can really get you motivated to do more. If you struggle with getting things done, body double, Find somebody, whether it's a YouTuber, or you're just watching or listening to something, and then you're doing something while doing that. Or if you have a roommate or a family, doing things while they're doing things ends up being a huge help for a lot of people. There's a lot of life hacks that you can take and you can start to make some progress on it. And if you need help, if you got questions, if you wanna know more, well, you can always just DM me or you can always check out videos because I share my journey, which down 80 pounds. Thank you very much. I'm very happy with that. Still got plenty of weight to lose but we are moving in the right direction here anyway guys i wish you all the absolute best thank you so much for checking out the video hopefully i will see you in the next one but until then take care